What's up, guys? We got Doublet and Dexter here to join us to talk about that commanding victory under 30 minutes. Uh, I gotta say, really convincing win. Were you expecting the game to go this well when you came into Champ Select? Hmm. I don't know. You can go. <laughs> go first. Go first. Actually, the second I saw picks, we had Braum, Yasuo, and Switch. We never showed something of this like before, but we champ we practiced those champions. But we are always slow to uh, show the champions. But the second we locked, like the second I release, and we got Braum, Twitch, and Yasuo mid, and I was like, okay, we practiced so much on those champions. This is like basically free, and yeah. We, we banned out Shifter, kind of, on his Assassins. We banned Syndra, which was a good thing to ban out. And yeah, I, ex as soon as I saw all champions locked in, I was like, okay, if we just don't feed early game, we will win the game for sure, 100%. And you guys specifically, when you do get into the game, um, especially versus Dignitas, it seems like, um, you seem to have very good counter plans pretty much laid up. Yeah. You are able to counter um, crumbs in the jungle a lot, and you guys in the bottom lane attract a lot of attention, and you guys are able to play around that very well. Is there something specifically about this team um, that makes them easier for you guys to read? Well... Their bot lane, I can speak from personal experience, like, they're not very good actors. And by that, I mean, <laughs> like, uh, when they have the jungler in the brush, or they have, like, Aurelia sitting in the brush waiting to, to gank us, uh -huh. it's really easy for me to tell. Like, we don't have vision of it, and we don't necessarily know, but, like, just based on the map, like, Vi and Aurelia are missing, and they're playing really far up. They're not playing normal. Um, and so that's kind of one thing that me and Afro have been working on for, you know, since we started playing together, is making sure that people don't, like, Cue in on what we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. um, like our ganks are pretty much unreadable because we're always playing aggressive. But Cutie Pie and Kiwi Kid, they kind of play really passive, and then when the gank comes, they're just like, "Oh, I'm gonna eat forward." <laughs> so this gank that you're talking about, we actually have a replay of it. Uh, yeah. Let's get that up on your guys' screen here. Now, I also before we play it, I want to ask you about Seraph's communication of this because he is the top laner up there, and there's been a lot of discussion about, you know that signal there, he's calling out right now, hey, Zion's not uh, here, like, I th be worried or what? No, I think it was uh, Peter, uh, Doublelift's call. He was uh -huh. like, okay, their bot lane is playing really aggressive. Four men are here, 100%. He called okay. it like 20 or 25 seconds in advance. And he's like, all right, I'm going to come in bot lane and we're going to counter against this. And yeah, like I said, they're not very good actors. Uh, and we knew that there are four people there because Aurelia was missing for like 30 seconds top lane. And yeah, we just... Yeah, like yeah, previous to this, like, Cutie Pie had eat forward on me, and he just like did it again, and I'm like, all right, we just need a TP in. It's it's such a choreographed gank right here, and so you know I tell Seraph, get your TP ready when this comes. And Dex is already in position to counter, it, and I think as soon as they see four people on a TP coming in, and like even Link comes because it's so easy to read, um, they just kind of back up. They're like, oh god, we've made a mistake, and uh, their bottom lane kind of never recovered from that point on. Yeah. yeah, it seemed to be rough the whole time. The thing is, I I know Cutie Pie, or at least throughout history, he's been a player who's been sort of a recklessly aggressive player, just kind of randomly. Uh, has that actually fallen off, which makes him easier to read? Um, well, the first time he ever e forward, e'd forward on me was like 10 seconds previous to that gank. So, um, yeah, I think he has like spurts of aggression, and I kind of just assume whenever he does that that the jungler's there, and I'm almost always right. Uh, yeah. They're like a really solid bot lane, but their acting skills are not great. So now, after this interview, next time you guys play, he's going to do that all the, the time. The mind game. <laughs> Here we yeah. go. Yeah. Level two of the mind games. Yeah. <laughs> gonna jump in on you and then just you'll just run away because you'll be afraid the whole time. Yeah, the other thing is they also spent a pink ward on that gank. They committed so many resources to that gank bottom. Mm -hmm. Once you turn something like that around, how do you guys as a team say, okay, we got this huge advantage. Simple steps for us to take that and make that advantage into, you know, something that's game winning. Well, it happened at Dragon. We knew that we had an advantage in the fight before and that we don't have ultimates. We want to. We would have wanted the dragon because we're in position. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we're like, okay. We don't have one or two ultimates. We can't fight this. We don't want to lose our lead. And if we give it a dragon, it's okay because we know what their next step is gonna be, and we try to counter this. And by this is we just say, okay, we give up dragon. It's co it's cool. We're still ahead, and we can just fight again if we have our ultimates up, which we did in the mid lane, and that resulted in the Baron and another catch actually. And from that point where we had Baron, the game was pretty much over because we just pushed through, and there was no way of recovering. Well, you just prepped the next replay yeah. really well then, I guess. Yeah, you could pull that up on <laughs> your screen if, uh, you know, Dexter, you just talked about it, so double if you want to talk about yeah. why this, take the one. this mid oh, one went yeah, so we, well. We had just um, given up a dragon because we were waiting for ulties, and then right here, Afro's counting down. I have ulti in five, four, three, two, and then we're like, all right, we're going. Like, your ulti's up, let's go. Uh, and they just kind of overcommitted because they're so desperate to get back in the game that they, they commit five people to hit this, like, one HP tower, which is not necessary. And then at this point, um, Afro goes in, he has great shield and a great ulti to kind of zone them away from their escape path, and they don't really know what to do. And me and Link flash the Ori ulti here, which lets us just clean up really easily. Yep. And the, one of the greatest things about playing Lulu and Yasuo together is 
just like the conjunction of like the speeds, the slows, and Yasuo's mobility, it's really easy to pick off people after they mess up. And then this is just free. Like we know that they're coming in. I just, uh, we everything is warded, so I'm just like, all right, I'm still on shifter. Um, I don't really know what they're doing. They should they should actually just be pushing mid right here and trying to get something out of our Baron. And that was just really good. That tornado ended up uh, knocking Cutie Pie out of his dash. So Link's a beast. Yeah, yeah that's so good. It worked really well. Actually, uh, I want to sort of talk about Link a little bit more because you had a push that ended the game basically, mm -hmm. where he like flashes dashes through four minions, goes to an inhibitor turret, and like Afro was like, "I got you," and like dives in afterwards. Like, yeah. does Link just say, "I'm going in, follow me," and you just respect the call? No, we we plan like we plan those things one minute and a half. Like we were okay. Orana has no flash. All we have to do is we have a Baron. We have a, such a huge advantage. We have Yasuo Windwall and Brom Shield. All we have to do is kill Orianna and we win the game. And Link was like, all right, I see the minion wave. I'm going for it. I, he stacked up his, uh, uh, his charge thing, like mm -hmm. the three stacks. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he was like, OK, I'm going for it. And then he uh, eat twice, flash, eat Orianna, and ultimate it. And we followed up on it. And the second Orianna dies, there's no way that they can win or can do anything because Orianna has no flash. She literally had zero armor. And even then, we just have too much follow-up damage from our team comp. And we have too much tankiness. And the team comp that we played was just all around 10 times better than their team comp. Yeah, plus Link already had a Guardian Angel ready yeah, for this. Was yeah, yeah. that this even like 15 minutes pre-planned yeah. here? He You're like, like, he's going to be playing yeah. very aggressive. So He had Baron and he was, okay, I'm going to buy Guardian Angel instantly. We're going to finish uh, the game right now. Yeah. Let's do it. He just had cash money yeah. ready. Yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah, why not? Actually, so I, I want to keep pressing you on, on this sort of plan ahead because you guys pride yourselves on strategic play, thinking the game out yeah. a few steps ahead. Uh, does that also play into, like, for example, when you're jungle ganking? Like, when you... Go into champ section, you're like, their Yasuo needs to get fed or they're going to lose the game. Like, does that, does that sort of dictate what sides of the map you play on? Like, how much does it play in, to even at the start of the game? It's really hard, especially in this game. I knew that, um, we knew that Crumb's going to start red buff. And he actually did a really good move there when he walked down to Dragon. Um, it was at three minutes. I was like, okay, I'm going to E over the wall. I knew that they tri mm -hmm. uh, the, the tri was watered. And I knew that if I gank through this pass with the repel over the Dragon, there's no way I can escape the gank because uh, we, we knew what they're going to do. And I was like, okay, I'm going to repel over the wall to Dragon. And with a Braum, we're just going to kill them, double kill. And yeah, he countered that move. Like, he watered, he watered there, he walked there at three minutes, which is really uncommon because usually the Vi is just farming the jungle. Mm -hmm. And it was, I didn't really expect that because if he wouldn't have done that, the bot lane would be over for sure. We would have double killed them. Yeah, and I think it was really important this game to for me to get ahead, or for me and Afro to get ahead. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had like a lot of successful ganks bottom lane, and that's like super important because then I can win the other lanes. So like Seraph got his tower taken, he was getting spam ganked, but it doesn't really matter because Aurelia can never ever CS because anytime she does, I'm just gonna stealth up on her and kill her. And like one time she was even sitting in the brush <laughs> patiently, just like trying to get XP, and I still killed her. So um, once Twitch gets ahead, you're pretty much gonna take control of the game and win the solo lanes. So no matter how bad they're doing, and Link was doing really well, but I still like managed to blow Ori's flash. Yeah, you did talk a lot last time you picked Twitch as well about ganking solo lanes in the mid game. Do you feel like with the new patch, you have more options as an AD carry uh, or less options? Well, honestly, I'd always built this build. Even on 4.9, I always went Bork and a Ghost Split on Twitch because uh, I feel like Twitch is a champion where once you get ahead, uh, it's not about split pushing, which is what I like to do but it's not the best thing to do anymore. Um, I don't care about CS. As soon as I take the enemy AD carry's tower, I'm just going to be killing everyone on the map. Yeah, as far as what AD carry champions, though, do you feel like any new ones have opened up, or do you feel like this is kind of uh, closing, mm, closing the I door? Think that, um, I think that I was like wrong with my initial impressions with Lucian, because I never thought to... Well, I did think about going Bork into Ghost Split on him, because he's like my second favorite champion, uh, but I never thought it would be as effective as it would be on Twitch. And I was wrong because Lucian's just kid is so strong. He can build something like that and just like <laughs> melt people. Yeah, seemed to work out really well for you guys. So now basically, uh, we're one game away for now two weeks in a row. Every team going one and one in the week. It's just like North America like having really absolute parity, or like are people being really inconsistent? Hmm. Especially us. I think we are. We had like the worst week of practice behind us, pretty much. And we we should be really happy that every team went one one because we, we might as well just go 0-2 this weekend and we would have dropped the rank for sure. Wow. I expected to go 0-2 after this week of practice and I'm really, really, really happy that we got 1-1 and we are still tied for first place because yeah. basically nothing happened. And yeah, we just have another week to prepare for a Super Week next week. And yeah, this is where all counts. And we, we took out like a rank 1 team right now with Dignitas. We won against them, which was really important. And yeah, I think this week was more important for us than for anyone else because we had a really rough week of practice behind us. 
I think right now, out of all times, is the worst time to be looking at standings and trying to use that to see which team is better than another team. Because like, people will look at the standings, they'll, they'll say, oh, look, Complexity or, or EG or whatever, that's the bottom of the standings. <laughs> and that means that they are worse than Curse or whoever is in the middle of the standings. Um, and right now, especially just because of the new patch and because everyone's stepping up super hard, it's like, com I think Complexity and Curse and EG and just like every team is just about the same. And then there's maybe like a, um, at the top, certain teams trying to claw their way up, like TSM, us, C9. And it, like Dig and LMQ are still in there too, but uh, standings right now, honestly, they mean nothing. I, I respect complexity the same way I respect Curse. Well, cool. Well, guys, uh, of course, congratulations on the win, and I guess better than you expected on the week with the win there. So guys, thanks for your time. We'll see you for four more games next week, but we've got more games today. We're take, gonna take one last break while we patch up the Nexus for our final LCS match, Curse versus Complexity. The summer split continues faster than you can